Hola community, it's Pablo Vasquez once again with a recap of the latest Blender today for the first week of March. Let's see how it went. 2.82a, yep. Even though we're talking about 2.83 for weeks already and it's the future, it's, it's still two months away. The release is expected in May. 2.82 got a few bug reports uh, that were very bad, like crashes mainly, that need to be fixed. Uh, for people to be able to use 2.82 in a more stable uh, fashion. So there will be an A release next week. So stay tuned for those news. There is a list of fixes that will make it in. But if you have any big, big crashes in 2.82, please report them because that's how you get a stable blender. Code quality day. It's one day per month where developers, the core developers that are like hired by the Blender Foundation and whoever wants to join the party have to spend one day just looking into making the code uh, more understandable, more like consistent and more better organized uh, for uh, for the future, for new developers that want to jump into Blender development and it maybe looks a bit weird or the variable names are all over the place, you know, just to organize it to keep it tidy. This is a very, very important thing that, it, yeah, it takes one day of development for all everybody in the team. Um, they do it also throughout the month, but the, there is one day where they only have to do that. Uh, and it's, a, it's an experiment. It's been going for a couple uh, months already. So it's so long it seems to be working, but uh, we'll see its uh, fruits in uh, coming months. I guess. Grease Pencil, that is the big news of the week because the Grease Pencil refactor that has been working on for months finally made it now is in Blender 2.83 Alpha. You can try it already. It brings better performance, vertex paint support, better palettes, a new masking system. Um, it's just just a whole like completely rewritten from scratch. It it should be it should work much better. Light support you can now use EV lights in in, in Chris pencil objects. So like 3D lighting in 2D objects. You should check it out. It's in code.blender.org. There is a blog post called Chris Pencil Refactor where you can read and see examples about everything that changed. Basically, it's just everything is better, very anti-aliasing, better compositing, and better correct color space for Chris Pencil objects. Just everything is much, much better. It just blends properly, <laughs> pun intended, uh, between 2D objects and 3D objects because finally the draw engine, the thing that takes care of drawing things in the in the, the thing that takes care of drawing things in a very very scientific Pablo all right so the engine that takes care of drawing 3d objects and 2d objects in the viewport got rewritten to not be a hack anymore you know blender when it got grease pencil back in 2.4 it was it was a hack it's like okay 2d painting on top of a 3d now it's an actual properly done 2d slash 3d um, engine <laughs> Cycles, adaptive sampling, finally made it in Blender. Yes, after so many years, this feature has been uh, asked and uh, there was a patch going around, but now it is here. What does it mean? It means faster rendering. You just basically turn it on from the sampling panel and it will throw more samples where it's needed and less samples where it's not. Isn't that smart? Yes. <laughs> Before Blender would throw uh, cycles, would put as, as many samples everywhere, like very equally, right? Dis distributed. But now with this setting, it can actually be a bit more smart to put them in some places where it's needed, like caustics or um, noisy parts of your render and leave them uh, the other zones with uh, just the right amount to have noise-free renders, which means faster rendering. Yay. <laughs> Scout mode also got improvements this week. It's called Face Sets. It's a quick way to hide and unhide certain parts of your mesh while you're sculpting. So it, it, you can control the visibility much more easily with this. It's a brush called Draw Face Sets where you can basically start painting and this area is gonna get a different color on which you can press H to isolate that area and start sculpting, H again to go back. There is a shortcut um, for like expanding from the area where you are working on is shift W. There is a video with all the dedicated shortcuts that I, it's easier to, to explain. But basically you can control visibility much more easily with this. And combined with masks, it really takes uh, sculpting to another level for uh, ease of use when you're like sculpting. This feature is very new, so make sure you get the latest, latest, not latest as in three days ago, but as in the like now. While you're watching this video, go download it because the some of the features that I mentioned, they were added like last night. 
Papari. Is that an English word? In Spanish, it means like a mix of many things. So, okay, first thing, USD now supports exporting metaballs. Yes, the universal scene description format that was added uh, support for export in 2.83 through, through 2 now supports uh, exporting metaballs. I know a lot of you were waiting for this metaball export feature so badly. The wave modifier got an option in the vertex group field where you can invert it very easily and you don't have to make a new vertex group for the invert version of that vertex group. How many times did I say vertex group? A million. Did you know that Blender has a camera rigs add-on built in Blender? It's just disabled by default, but if you go to the settings, enable it, you're gonna find in the shift A menu, uh, add camera and you get different rigs. There is a new to the camera rig that was added last week. And a whole lot of uh, tweaks and little fixes. There's like new icons in the file browser for macOS and Windows, but the big fixes and improvements were done in Manta Flow. There, there was a big, big uh, performance improvements, optimizations and uh, bug fixes going on with Manta Flow. So please go test with the latest builds, test how it's, how it's going because that's how we all get it uh, fixed. That's how we make it better for everybody. So don't stay away if it doesn't work, please. The other way, go find the bug reports and, and try to help uh, each other just to make it more stable. And lastly, there was a fix done among all the other fixes in the cloud simulation department and it had to do with the sewing uh, feature of Blender, which uh, by judging by the live stream chat, a lot of people were not aware that Blender cloud simulation supported sewing. So you can, you can have a bunch of edges and the mesh will boom, basically just stitch together by itself. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I wonder how many of those little features here and there people are not aware of. So how would you call it? Like uh, like hidden treasures or, or I don't know. And that is all for this week. I hope you like this uh, second recap. I hope you like the format. Still don't know what to do with it exactly. If I should uh, do a recap just like this and then leave the live streams for like chatting, maybe that's more fun or interviewing developers or artists and uh, maybe a Q&A once a month or every two weeks or something like that, just dedicated to Q&A to organize things a little bit better. So let me know in the comments, what are your ideas and your thoughts on this format? It was Paolo Vasquez with another Blender Today recap from the Blender HQ in Amsterdam and see you next week. Bye-bye.